In this one, we're going to look at a new security camera by RealLink. This is the RLC 510WA. I think you're going to be very impressed with the performance of this one. Got a package arrived in the mail today. It's sealed. So I guess we'll just open this together and see what goodies have arrived. Because I have no idea what this is. So I will be just as surprised as you. It looks to be... Oh, it's a camera. It's another real link camera. This must be the new one that they are releasing. Do not accept if seal is broken. This one's the RLC 510 WA and from what I understand about this because they, they contacted me it uh, does not require cloud uh, storage it can store the videos on the memory card and the AI for motion control is supposed to be much better than it was on previous models so let's crack this one open and take a look at it before we open the package let's take a look at the specs so it's um, Smart alarm with person and vehicle detection, 24-7 recording or motion recording, 2.5 and 5 gigahertz dual band Wi-Fi, micro SD slot, IP66, waterproof, and easy remote access. I've already got three real link cameras, and I will tell you right now, they're the best of the cameras I've used. All of them, they are the best ones. I've got two, I've got one that runs it's plugged in running full time now and I've got two that are are uh, solar powered and they both all of them are excellent so we'll crack open the seal here then a good job of sealing this up Ethernet cable comes with a power extension cable template for drilling the camera itself that looks pretty cool a camera has a power cable a reset button and an Ethernet port so that if you want to hardwire the camera you know you drill a hole and put this up into your soffit so that someone can't access it it does require power it's a metal case and a really nice looking camera comes with two antennas we'll put the antennas on and then I'm going to pair this with my system and uh, we'll see how it looks and then I'm going to put it outside and let it record so the two antennas screw on each one in their own little ziplock bag Somewhere in here there will be a power adapter, which there is. So let's just power the camera up and get it set up. To set this camera up, we actually connect it to the LAN with a LAN cable and plug it in. And let the camera boot up. And then we'll use the app to connect it. So let me allow the camera to boot up. I already have the app installed on my phone, so it's just a matter of finding the camera on the network and uh, adding it to the Wi-Fi network and then the camera should be ready to go and it should automatically synchronize with the app and I'll have four then showing on the app. So as soon as I load the app it shows as an uninitialized device which is going to be the new one so let me click on it here it'll start the initialization and I gotta create a password to log in so let me do that. So basically you put you enter a password you create a password for the camera you connect it to your Wi-Fi network and put in your Wi-Fi password and then once it's done it will save this it's going to create a it's going to create a uh, a QR code here in a second. So when I click on this, it should create a QR code. It's saved to the phone. So if I have to reconnect it, but uh, there it is. It's connected, and the camera is online. And we can see the picture. Where are we here? Try the right way up here. There we go. You see. So I need to find an SD card, load an SD card, and then the camera will record. And I almost forgot to mention, yes, you can unplug the Ethernet cord. It's only required to initially pair the camera to your network. 
Once it's installed, there's a QR code that you can bring up on the phone. So if you ever have to reconnect it, you can bring, flash your QR code and it will reconnect. The SD card goes in the back. You know, so there's a gasket around the SD card to keep moisture out. The SD card just plugs in. I've put a 64 gig card in this one. We'll put the cover back on. Put the screws in and then I'm going to take this camera outside, mount it, and uh, we'll begin our long-term test. I've been using the real ink cameras now for a few years and have had zero problems with them. By of all the the cameras I've tested, these ones here have been the best. They have the best motion control, the easiest way to search for recordings. Let's say you can have it record full time or just have it record when there's motion. I've typically just record when there's motion. It makes it really easy to find the clips. I'm just going to go mount this, plug it in, and then uh, we'll take a look at the picture off the phone once I've got it plugged in. The thing I'll do to keep any moisture out of the connector so it comes with a waterproof kit, like for if you're going to hardwire it, because this one obviously can be hardwired with Cat5. If you've got Cat5 in place, obviously it's going to provide a better connection than going through wireless. But uh, I'm just going to take the the weatherproof seal, and put some tape over the end of it. So this piece screws on, and then the gasket. goes around there that keeps the connection tight that way if this is exposed outside it's not going to get wet and cause a problem short out the connection uh, once the camera is on I'm just before I'm mounting it outside I'm just going to bring up the app again make sure that the card is formatted so there's the, the camera now I'm going to go into set up because it says the SD card is not formatted so I'm going to click format and I'm going to format the card yes it's a brand new card so format is now successful so now this is set to record and uh, when, when it does record the clips will all show up here but we'll take a look at that a little bit later I'm going to mount the camera so that it can record stuff during the day okay I've mounted the camera no that's not it this is it over here so I've mounted it looking across my front yard into my driveway and we'll set up the motion tracking on it so that it will record anything that comes and goes and uh, we'll check it out for a playback in a little bit I'm thinking I'm in low resolution also if I tick there it should go to 5 megapixel high resolution there we go so now I've just kicked it up to the full bandwidth Once clips start to record, okay, this is where I get to set. I can set it for what I want to monitor. So I should be able to resize this box here so that I can tell it this is where I want to watch. I want to watch everything. I want to watch everything that happens so I can zoom that out. And now it'll record everything that happens anytime anybody goes up and down the street or comes into my yard it should be recorded. That's how this works. If I go to playback, you can see that there's already there's already one clip that was while I was setting up the camera. If I click on here, this will play back what was recorded before I had the camera pointed. It probably include me pointing the camera. If I fast forward a bit through here, you'll see me positioning the camera. That's how the clips work on this and it will it will it will record every time it detects motion and it's going to record anything that's in that box which I have now made the full front yard and, and the street although if you only wanted to watch your driveway for example you could set the box so that it didn't include the street but for this test I want to record everything that's happening so I'm going to let this thing go for a while and uh, then we'll take a look at some of the footage if I want to put this up full screen I just tap here and now it'll go full screen I can also watch this on my PC I can log in to real link and watch this on my computer as well so it's a uh, very flexible you can watch on your computer on your tablet or on your phone
And now this is before I kicked it up into full HD. This is just in standard mode. Uh, but I've now, as I say, since bumped bump this up into full HD. And there's me heading back in. I'm, I'm looking at the picture now on the camera and I'm going to head back in. And, uh, and then I, that's when I started working on the video here. So uh, let's let this thing record and we'll check back with it in a bit. I should also point out if you've got multiple real link, you can see them all on the screen at once. So in this case, I've got four cameras. There's all four of them. Uh, this one and this one are both powered cameras and these other two here are are solar powered. So they only record, um, they're only turned on when you actually turn them on to look at them or when there's a clip being recorded. They use uh, an infrared sensor to trigger an event on them and they will record any time they see a heat signature that triggers the infrared, they will record it. But you can look at all four cameras at once and if I hit that button there, I can bring them up full screen. So you can watch four cameras at once on the screen, which is pretty cool. Like I've said in prior videos where I've tested the real link, these ones here, as far as the do-it-yourself cameras, these are as good as I've seen. Um, some of the professional ones, like the ones we install at work, have additional features that are available as part of that service, but as far as a DIY camera goes, these are as good as I've seen. All right, this has been going for a while. Let's just check, uh, let's just check playback. So as you can see, it's got a, a, a series of recordings that have been made. I'm trying to stop the reflection from my lights there. And there's the series of recordings all show up here. So for example, with the time and how long it was recorded for. So for example, when I went out, this is probably one of my recordings here. Uh, when did I leave? So every time, it, every time it's triggered, it'll play back a recording. So there's a car coming out of the neighbor's driveway. And it will play all the, the triggered events in order, one after another. And there's the next recording of me leaving. So we'll skip ahead a bit and just see what the next series of recordings are that's made. So there's a recording of people walking up the street. As you see, it actually pre-rolls. So it doesn't wait until they trigger the event, it's actually recording and it stores the event prior to the movement being detected, which is a neat feature that uh, Reolink has been really good at doing, especially with the other camera. Okay, next recording here again, you'll see there's a pre-roll, and if I turn the camera full screen, we can watch. And there's that car that triggered. Oh, that's the wife arriving home. Okay, the next shot. somebody walking up the street I had a phone call there so I had to shut the camera off but here we go playing back you should see a couple of shots before I arrive home there's one of the neighbor leaving as you can see it pre-rolls for several seconds and if we watch the time at the top when it goes to the next clip it'll have the time that the next clip was recorded next clip was recorded at 312 
And that's a shot of me arriving home after running up to the post office to pick up a package of an item coming in for repair. I actually sat in my car for a couple minutes as I was listening to the radio so it should move to the next clip before, when I get out of the car to come back into the, into the garage here. So we'll look at some shots when it's dark and see how the camera performs and I'll even turn out all the lights so that all the exterior lights are out and we can just see how the camera performs with its own infrared emitters as it should see everything in the driveway no problem under infrared light. Okay that's the next clip just before I got out of the car. Well, that was probably that car that triggered it. It's got quite the the pre-roll, which is always nice because it captures those events that might otherwise be missed. I've seen some cameras that uh, will start recording after somebody's already in the scene, and um, it totally misses, you know, the the beginning of the event. Okay it's now dark out I've got all the lights out and we're looking at this on my computer. I can cycle between the different cameras like if I go to camera number one which is uh, this one I go to the other camera this is the original real link and then I've got the the solar powered ones which I have to log into. Oh, I got to connect to them. So there's one of the solar powered cameras. I have it in color nighttime view on this one. It uh, really works well. Like it's pretty much pitch black out there right now. There's very little light. It's uh, you know 9:45 at night here. The sun's been down for a while. But uh, even this one shows quite a nice picture. Um, here's the the other camera up here in the corner. This is a my address sign lighting up neon. Again, the other camera I've got it set for color at night as well. Here's the new one. This is in night shot mode. And I can switch this to color mode as well so you can see how it performs in virtually no light. But this is the infrared emitters that are on now. The reason the other cameras are in, in um, color mode is so that their infrared emitters are not on. So what you're seeing here is the infrared emitter is from this camera is what's lighting up this whole area. Right? There's no other infrared emitters here but this is all being lit up by this camera. Oh, I've got the alarm set so that when... Uh, it detects motion, it'll beep on the computer here. If I touch the uh, setup dots here, I can switch day and night. So if I say uh, color mode, it will switch the camera to color. So this is what it can see with the little bit of light that's out there now. So as you can see, the computer image is actually quite good even in low light with all the lights out. It's There's not a heck of a lot of light out there right now. I'll show you with my my camera I'll show you what's out there I'll take this camera out front so here's what I can see with my Sony uh, until I put it in night shot that's what I can see with night shot on on my little handy cam turn it off so the real link is actually showing a, a pretty good picture because it is relatively dark out here right now and there's the nighttime shot on my phone as you can see it's quite bright on the phone we'll switch it back to black and white and there it is with the night vision turned on black and white picture but you can see everything very clearly the night shot on here is excellent now just like on the phone you can play your recordings back 
on the PC, which is what I'm doing now, and I can just pick a time and click on the timeline and it'll play back that recording. So there's a recording from earlier today. I can go back even earlier. And we'll see probably somebody drive up the street here. But it's you can play it back exactly like you can on the phone. Which is nice. You know, some of these cameras that you buy, uh, some of them will only play back properly on the phone. The nice thing about the real link is they have a PC app for it that will connect any and all, there I'm going and getting in my car, any and all um, real link cameras are accessible through the PC app. This is our, our graph down here. All the recordings have been made. I haven't set this thing up to only record in certain areas. My other camera, for example, I've only got certain specific zones. My other real link will only record in certain specific zones. These ones aren't seeing anything right now because they're the, they, they are the battery powered cameras and I actually have to log into them. For example, I've got both of the cameras now playing back in sync. So you'll see both of the car will start to move on both of them relatively quickly. Right, it's recorded on both the cameras and I can play them both back and if I if I turn the other cameras on it would uh, it would pick the other cameras up at the same time so you can view live and you can view recordings back and your recordings will play back in sync if you've got multiple cameras which is kinda nice and there's no cloud service required to use the real link cameras all you need to do is put a micro SD card in the camera and it will record all of your events you can either have it record 24 hours a day or you can have it only record events and I've got this one set up so it only records events when anything that occurs within the drive this one here I don't have it recording cars going up and down the street I only have it recording when there's actual action happening so right now there's nothing happening here but this one here has obviously been triggered by another event and we'll see something happen on the street here We should see there you go somebody walking up to uh, my house to drop something off looks like a newspaper or something bring it up full screen and we should see them leaving again here I just brought up the third camera recordings from the third camera because there's four of them there this one here is another battery powered camera so they only record just they're they're battery powered but solar solar recharged so they only record when there's actual uh, motion so we should see the other camera this one here should pop in here momentarily because it'll pick up a heat signature which it did these cars don't produce any heat signature because they're uh, electric okay that about does it for this one this is the real link RLC 510 WA link to this one's in the description thanks for watching